Hello, and welcome back to the cockpit of the Fly-By-Wire A320. Today we're going to have a brief video regarding some of the new features that are going to be released with version 1.0.3.0. Uh, in this version, the co-pilot can now program the MCDU uh, almost in its entirety, with the exception of setting the, uh, the departure and the arrival runways, uh, as well as the SIDS and the STARS. Uh, if you're looking for a more comprehensive video on how the uh, flight, flight Simulator First Officer Next works with the Fly-By-Wire A320, A320 you, can, uh, you can see it on, uh, on this channel. As said, this will just be a brief uh, demonstration uh, regarding the pre-flight flow uh, and how the co-pilot interacts with the MCDU. With the introductions out of the way, let's go ahead and let's fire up uh, Flight Simulator First Officer Next. We are in auto connect mode, so the, the software will automatically connect to your simulator. And as you can see, it's already found that we are sitting in the cockpit of the Fly-By-Wire A320. Uh, let's, next step would be to uh, turn on our electronic flight bag and to open the, uh, the, the door to signal to the, uh, the uh, first officer to begin his uh, pre-flight flows. So here he comes. He's on his way into the cockpit. First thing he'll do is again. Good afternoon, Captain. Perform his safety checks, looking at the uh, the uh, the throttles, the flaps, the landing gear, uh, the the fuel cutoff switches, uh, and those uh, and the wipers. Powering up the aircraft. Uh, Forty-five second self test. Uh, during this time, uh, I'm going to go ahead and import a flight plan. Uh, this is a flight plan I created with uh, Simbrief, uh, which is an absolute essential tool. And also, uh, we'll get into it a little bit more uh, as we go through this demonstration, but interaction or uh, integration with uh, between the Fly-By-Wire A320 and Simbrief uh, is required to, uh, to make work what I'm about to show you. Uh, nope, this is a vector departure, and we will use flaps one. Uh, the flex temperature, uh, we're set to uh, 49. I've already looked at, uh, uh, got my flex temperature uh, through a program called TopCat. Uh, which has been around for a, a long time. Uh, it is payware. There are some freeware um, calculators out there on the internet uh, on Flight Sim 2 and things like that that you can use to get your flex temperature. Uh, flex temperature, again, is essentially telling the, uh, tricking the engines uh, to thinking the, uh, it, the temperature is different than what it is, so the uh, engines don't operate at full power on every takeoff. You don't want that because that obviously... Uh, escalates the uh, the wear and tear on those engines. Again, you can get the flex temperature from a number of different tools. I use TopCat, uh, search Flight Sim 2 and you two, and you can find a uh, calculator to get that. Uh, the reason why it's important that you put it in the, our performance page is because the co-pilot is going to set that for you. Uh, as you can see now, our co-pilot is setting, or excuse me, performing some systems tests. Uh, again, the reason why he's doing that is because when he entered the uh, cockpit, he discovered it was in a cold and dark state, and he assumes then that this is the uh, the first flight of the day. So it requires some uh, systems test. Um, the uh, the co-pilot also, before he started performing his test, you can see that he's already requested or already started to align our IRSs. All right, so here we go. We're beginning uh, to, to see the new feature. Uh, the co-pilot now is going to go in, and he's going to... Uh, Make an initial data request uh, through the MCDU through the uh, the ACAR system, um, and again, this requires uh, interaction with Simbrief. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, he just went ahead and uh, and completely configured your A page. And uh, now, what he's going to do is uh, through the ATSU go in and uh, and uh, request uh, weather uh, information uh, for all three of your your uh, your uh, departure, arrival, and your alternative. Uh, we'll have to wait between 20 and 25 seconds for the uh, for the system um, to query the database and then return uh, the message to the uh, to the aircraft. Uh, and then, in which case the uh, your copilot you'll watch here in a second uh, will go ahead and uh, print that out for you. Again, uh, this does require uh, Simbrief uh, integration. There are plenty of videos uh, online that, that show you how to set up the Fly-By-Wire A320 uh, to enable you to automatically request download of your flight plan. Now you see the co-pilot going in, and he, uh, he just uh, initiated the boarding process for you, and he will return the... Uh, you can program the CDU now. The uh, MCDU back to the, uh, to the flight plan page. Heading out for the walk-around. 
uh, which will allow you to do your one and only task as a captain, which is essentially to uh, to set your uh, departure and your uh, arrival runways. Now, I am hoping at, at some point um, in the not too distant future that uh, I will configure um, the FSFO, the co-pilot, to do this for you. So um, you, as the as the uh, captain, then uh, can be the one that actually uh, does the walk around while your co-pilot is the one who will program the uh, MCDU in its true entirety. Um, so at this time, uh, right now, you see the co-pilot is around the, uh, is doing his walk around. This is the time where you would uh, first, uh, you would monitor the uh, the, the boarding process um, that the uh, the co-pilot just initiated. So, uh, oh, excuse me, I went into the uh, weights and balances here. Uh, and we, you can see right here, we have a total of 13 of 147 uh, passengers on board. Again, the 147 passengers, uh, for, for those of you uh, who may not be aware, that actually uh, it came from SimBrief as well. Uh, SimBrief can set to, to be set to uh, uh, randomly select a amount of uh, passengers for you, and then it's automatically uh, downloaded into the, uh, the Sim uh, when you request uh, the initial uh, uh, request, uh, which we did. Uh, for SimBrief interaction, it's it's really quite simple. I'm sure many of you already know how to do this, but it essentially just go uh, go to uh, the uh, the settings page on your electronic flight bag, and um, within here uh, you just set your pilot ID and uh, or your username, and that's all that's required. It's really that simple. If you're unfamiliar with uh, SimBrief, it is a free online uh, flight planning tool uh, that, quite frankly, I used to use a payware probably. Uh, many of you did to use PFP, PX as a payware flight planner. Um, since switching the, the Microsoft Flight Simulator, I, I find myself using PFPX. Actually, I kind of, I never use it anymore, really. I completely uh, use SimBrief now as it's, it seems to be the ubiquitous tool now that integrates with, uh, with uh, the third-party aircraft. And I hope uh, as, as the uh, PMDG and the uh, Phoenix Air and some of the other uh, uh, third-party aircraft come online that they watch what fly-by-wire is doing uh, and make the same type of integrations within their software because it adds a level of immersion and quite frankly it just it just makes makes things better all right so uh, we know from our our uh, flight plan uh, we need about 13,000 pounds of fuel so I'm gonna go ahead and set that now and that's loaded again uh, uh, the uh, the SimBrief uh, integration is a little bit tutor tutorial is a little bit beyond the uh, scope of this but you can download your SimBrief uh, flight plan by simply clicking on, on the button right there and then you'll have uh, the the OFP the operational flight plan will be downloaded into your uh, electronic flight bag and again I got the 13,000 pound that's the block full fuel that was uh, that was required from SimBrief okay so what we're doing now is that we've loaded the fuel onto the uh, to the aircraft uh, we're waiting for the passengers to, to board now uh, it's important that you uh, load both the uh, the fuel and allow all the passengers to, to board before you terminate the uh, the walk around process. And the reason why that's important is because when the co-pilot comes back into the uh, cockpit, he's going to go ahead and program the init B page. And in order for him to do so, he needs the uh, the current weight of the aircraft. So uh, don't uh, um, terminate the walk around process uh, until all your passengers are are loaded uh, on onto the uh, to the aircraft. Um, also, one other thing uh, I wanted to take note of in the um, prior uh, uh, version of this aircraft, this uh, program FMS configuration does not did, does not exist. Essentially, this was set IRS. Well, set IRS now has been included within program FMS. If you, as the pilot in command, want to uh, to program your FMS, then just go ahead and deselect this option. However, if you want your co-pilot to do it for you, then uh, then keep this uh, selected. Uh, by the way, for the, those of you that own the um, the uh, the the f uh, excuse me the Aerosoft CRJ, uh, that uh, Copilot 2 can also set your route for you there and program your uh, your uh, CDU or excuse me your FMS in that aircraft as well. So I'm hoping to make this a standard feature on uh, on all the uh, third-party aircraft. And again, hoping that they have some type of uh, integration uh, with SimBrief as we go forward. Um, even uh, an aircraft like the Salty uh, or uh, Salty uh, Simulation 747, even they have an integration with uh, with SimBrief. So again, it's becoming the uh, the standard kind of de facto uh, uh, 
thing for simulators to do because, quite frankly, as simulator pilots, that's something I think we demand. And uh, if we got a third-party aircraft, especially one that we're paying three figures for that didn't have that same brief uh, interaction or integration, uh, I, I, don't, I think many of us would uh, be upset. At least I, I know I would be. All right, so what I'm going to do here is just uh, pause the video. Uh, I won't wait for you guys the whole uh, the two minutes to, to, to complete this. Um, again, this would be the time I would be setting up my, my online uh, flight and um, just getting everything ready uh, external to the aircraft to, to, to perform a flight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause here and we'll rejoin you as the, as the uh, co-pilot um, uh, completes his walk around. Okay, the uh, the co-pilot is just about finished his walk around, and uh, and uh, the the boarding process is completed. All 147 per, uh, passengers are on board. Uh, as you recall earlier, we requested a, complete. a printout of the uh, the the current meters, and uh, I forgot to uh, go ahead and place that up on the uh, up on the uh, pet pedestal here. So so here we go now. The uh, the the uh, co-pilot has re-entered the cockpit. He just went to the init B page, and as you can see. He uh, configured that for you. Now he's going to go to the performance page and uh, set up uh, the, uh, uh, the performance of the, uh, the aircraft. And you see the flex temperature that we inputted earlier is now in there at 49, setting up all the, the V speeds for you. Uh, so you have that all as well. Um, V2, uh, he'll set up the transition altitude um, based on the, the flight plan that we inputted on our performance page. So there we go. Uh, he will go ahead and also set up the arrival uh, performance page as well. Of course, you will have to check that as you get closer to the, uh, the airport because the, the flight uh, may change or the weather may change, excuse me. So there we go. We have a, a minus, uh, uh, whoop, okay, hey, there's an error right there. That M should have been converted to a minus, which means it's minus four degrees. I will get that, I will get that fixed uh, before I, I push this out. So it's, uh, it's a cold day here in Bangor, minus 4 degrees, and uh, I'm glad that happened. So there we go. There's a 200 for our radio altimeter, uh, and there you go. It, it is all set up. Uh, the co-pilot will now go up and, uh, and uh, set up the, uh, the flight guidance system. And as you can see, if you were paying attention, uh, the, the meter uh, corresponds to what is shown here. So it, it, uh, it's... Uh, kind of a perfect match if you will minus one degrees uh, our, our Q&H was 2975 uh, all of that so what I'll do here is I will uh, I will go and put that minus five to the minus five in but the M should have been converted to a uh, uh, to a minus sign so I will make sure uh, that happens um, so you can see complete programming of the MCDU honestly right now the way the uh, the fly-by-wire A320 database is set up. It really doesn't um, impact the VAP as it should or your VLS speed. Um, it should in the real world depending on the temperature, but uh, it does not at this point. I'm sure it will in the future as, uh, as those guys are awesome. Uh, so there you go. That is uh, the, a brief demonstration of the Flight Simulator First Officer uh, completely configuring your CDU for you. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. This will be released after I fix that one minor error. And uh, in the next few hours, um, I hope you enjoy. If you have any um, recommendations on how we can make this better, please let me know. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.